Hello, I'm Ellie Hutch and this is Homes and Housing, the show that digs deeper than bricks and mortar to bring you the best local information, whether you're a renter, homeowner, landlord or developer. And today we're with Central Housing Group. <laughs> Now this Barnet based company utilises its guaranteed rental scheme to provide landlords with an assured and reliable way to let their property. And let's face it, after the year that's just passed, many landlords have faced secure rent challenges. So I have a few questions for the director, Ramesh, to find out why this is and to see if next year might look a bit more rosy. So tell me, what have been some of the issues faced by landlords most recently? Over the last sort of few months, some of the main issues landlords have faced is having their property empty, uh, struggling to relet it in this current sort of climate that we're in. Um, also, some landlords have had a situation where they've had tenants who've been unable to pay their rent. And we've also come across landlords where they've been in the process of trying to regain possession of their property through the courts. And that whole process has been halted um, due to the current pandemic that we're uh, uh, experiencing. So what does Central Housing Group logistically do for its landlords? Um, so Central Housing Group, we've been established for 20 years now and we're a residential letting and management agency and we offer landlords a guaranteed rent. So we guarantee their rent by working with local authorities who we have contracts with. So we work with a number of local authorities across London and they require accommodation and housing for many of their families that are approaching them for housing assistance. What does letting to the council actually entail? Letting to the council essentially means that um, it allows a landlord to receive a guaranteed rent. Uh, also it means that they wouldn't have a property that's going to be sitting empty in the future. So if it were to fall vacant, they would still get their rent paid. They're protected from some of the risks of renting when you let to the council on our scheme. So you wouldn't have a situation where you have to apply to court and pay for legal and court costs if, a, if possession of your property was required. Um, so there are a number of sort of key benefits that help landlords and protect them from some of the risks of renting really. How does the guaranteed rent scheme actually work? Um, so in essence we would basically work with a private landlord and uh, procure their property uh, and ensure it meets a certain standard and then offer that to the local authority. So we would let and manage from start to finish and that's a requirement that the local authorities have of us that we should let and manage that property. So as part of that whole process we would need to visit, inspect that property to ensure that it meets the correct standard. Sometimes we would need to give advice to a landlord in, to ensure that they can bring it up to the correct standard. We also um, assist landlords by getting work done for them if it were say an electrical report or a gas report or fitting of a fire door or other safety features that the councils require. So do you manage the entirety of the process or is the landlord involved? How does it work? Um, to be honest, it really depends on the landlord. So every landlord's different. Some landlords want to do everything themselves and some like to um, receive assistance from us to get things done. But hey, hold on a second. Why don't we just go and see some properties and let's have a look and see for ourselves. Right, so here we are. We're at a three bedroom, first floor, purpose built masonette, Penn Court in Collindale, London NW9. It's amazing actually, having a look around, it's really spacious. How did you come to be involved in this? How did this come to Central Housing Group? Well, um, we, we spend uh, effort and time uh, promoting ourselves on the internet through Google and uh, SEO of our web website. Uh, and so we were contacted by the uh, owners. They, they were in the process of purchasing the property. And so whilst they'd identified the purchase of it, they contacted us because they wanted us to get involved in the potential letting of it. Uh, but let me show you around some of the things that um, we've focused on and we uh, asked the landlords to carry out. Perfect. If we look above in the hallway here, we've got a smoke alarm. Yeah. And this is a mains powered smoke alarm, which is fixed to the mains electrical wiring. Also, you can see here we've got a loft hatch. Oh yeah, I can see that now. Hang on, both sides locked. Why is this? Well, essentially um, for tenant safety, because we don't want to allow tenants access to loft areas in case they're not boarded, if they're not safe. Uh, and so it's a safety issue really. We, we wouldn't want them to have an accident. We had to test the electrical installation. As you can see here, this is the fuse box. This has been tested to the latest electrical standards to make sure it's safe and a certificate has been provided to confirm such. Amazing. So I love cooking. 
So can the next room we look at be the kitchen, please? Absolutely, let's go and have a look at the kitchen. Okay. So this is the kitchen. As you can see over here, this is a half hour rated fire door that we asked the landlords to fit. It's got an overhead door yes. closer, heat and smoke strips, three steel hinges, handle and latch. This is the specification that's required when we fit a fire door in a property with the local authorities. And then over here you will see we have a carbon monoxide alarm because the boiler and the gas hob are located in this room so it's essential that we have a carbon monoxide alarm to uh, protection of, of the tenant. So above here um, we have the heat detector oh, and th detector. this is linked to the smoke alarm that we've already fitted. Yeah. Um, so if there was a, a fire in another part of the building this would trigger and go off Oh, excellent. or, or vice versa. If the, this room got very hot it would trigger the other smoke alarms to start beeping at the same time for I safety. I see, okay. And I notice my hand's quite close to the fridge. Is it um, regular for landlords to have to provide white goods and if so how would they check for safety? Sure. Um, the, the minimum requirement that we require is a fridge freezer and a, a cooker, mm -hmm. uh, oven, hob, extractor or a gas, a separate um, freestanding gas or electrical cooker. All these appliances must be tested and that's called a PAT test, portable appliance test. So we ensure they're tested when we take a property on. Okay. So over here we have a fire blanket and a fire extinguisher these again are things that are required by the local authorities for the tenant safety. I would have thought um, the fire extinguisher, but I would never, if I were a landlord, have thought a fire blanket. So these are all things that you advise. And that are required standard. when we take a property on, yes. Okay, amazing. Right, shall we go and have a look at the lounge? I'd love to. So, when we originally came to look at this property with the landlords when they just purchased it, this ceiling above us had polystyrene ceiling tiles fitted to it all the way across. Oh, that's quite old fashioned, isn't it? Absolutely, it is old fashioned, but that wasn't our main area of concern. Our main area of concern was they are a fire hazard. So, in the event of a fire of and they burn, they give off a really, really dangerous sort of fumes, which obviously is not going to be good for a tenant occupying. Um, this is the main bedroom in yeah. the property. Um, we've had works done to it again with the ceiling, a polystyrene ceiling tiles, yeah. but also there were inadequate um, electrical sockets. So, there was a single socket here. Previously, yeah. we've had this. Yes, we've had this converted to a twin socket. On the windows, you can see these large window openers. Um, in terms of safety, um, they could be considered uh, unsafe if a ch young child was able to open them and potentially get out or fall out. So, on all the large window openers that we have in properties, we're required to fit child safety restrictors which is like a cable yeah. restrictor with a key, which would need to be released. And that's in the children's bedrooms that's as well? All, all large window openers in the property. Here we are in the bathroom. We were quite fortunate with this particular property because, as you can see, it's in excellent condition and in good order. We didn't have to ask the landlords to do too much work here. Basically, mastic sealant around the bath and also the shower cubicle. However, we did have to, again, ask them to ensure that there was a child safety course, restrictor yeah. in place so children can't uh, get out of this large window opening. Um, however, if this property didn't have uh, such a nice bathroom, the kind of things we would be asking for would be like a shower screen, a shower curtain and a rail, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously all the taps to be working in good order, the toilet seat to be replaced if that was a, an old uh, toilet seat and not in a good acceptable condition, mm -hmm. things like privacy locks on the doors so that they can be locked for safety and, and also for privacy for people to use, um, so yes. So here we are in property two, can you talk me through it? Yes, absolutely. So we're here in a three bedroom, first floor, purpose built masonette, which is in Hendon, NW4, uh, Ravenshurst Avenue. What's your involvement been from the uh, letting perspective? Well, with this particular property, we were contacted by the landlords who live overseas, uh, and they um, contacted us to find out a little bit how we worked and what we did, mm -hmm. and our guaranteed rent scheme. Uh, we came, inspected, had a look, and advised them of the kind of works that needed to be done. Because they were living overseas, they weren't local, they asked us to carry out all the works that were required to bring it up to the standard for the council. So we're in the hallway here at the moment, yeah. so um, one of the things that we have to do is fit a mains powered smoke alarm as you can see on the of ceiling course, there. Yeah. Also uh, to lock off the loft hatches again for safety. Oh yeah, that's a tiny loft. 
It's just a tiny <laughs> log hatch, absolutely. And there's another one in the other part of the building as well. I see. Look at these high ceilings. You can definitely tell we're in an older building. Absolutely, yeah. So, so what's this room in here? We had to uh, put underlaying carpet throughout on the first floor. Oh, so all of the carpets absolutely. brand new? Okay. So prior to um, we, us taking the property on, it had stripped floorboards, which had large gaps on it, little splinters, nails sticking out of it. So these are all health and safety things, which aren't practical and suitable for where you've got families with young children. So we also redecorated all the walls mm -hmm. uh, and the woodwork. And also with these windows here, um, we had a situation where there was misting, so there was moisture getting inside the seals of the of the window panes. Mm. So the glass had to be replaced because it's vacuum sealed glass uh, that stops for moisture getting in. Okay, so uh, here we are, bedroom two, same sort of thing, redecoration, flooring done again. Also, I wanted to just quickly show you the window. We had to put child safety window restrictors here to stop the window opening fully see, for safety. Yeah. And also, we did actually have to put nets and heavy curtains on these particular windows for the landlord. What stuff I'd like to really show you is in the kitchen and in the bathroom, so shall we head over there? Excellent. Okay, so we're about to enter the kitchen, and this is the fire door from the lounge entering the kitchen. As you can see, again, an overhead door closer, three steel hinges, and you've got the handle and latch and a heat and smoke strips to close the door. Again, in the kitchen, you've got a fire blanket extinguisher, yeah. you've got a boiler in the corner, You've got here, we were actually required to fit new windows, so a new window to this wing here, and also in the bathroom next door, and also the back uh, door to the, leading to the garden. And you keep saying you're bringing it up to standard as well as safety, so what does that mean? Uh, to standard means to an acceptable standard that basically you or I would be happy to live in. Ah, uh, yes, of course. I'd be happy to live here. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you Ramesh because you've really demonstrated the two different types of landlord experience today with the two properties. Yeah. But I have a question, so if I were a landlord for the first time and I had a property, how would I go about engaging with you in the first instance to get my property up to standard? Um, I would say have a look at our website, uh, give us a call and we can have a chat with we'll explain how our scheme works. We'd like to follow that up with some information which basically reinforces how we deal with various issues like nuisance, antisocial behaviour, repairs, maintenance, visits, inspections, etc. And then uh, the next step, if somebody's on board with the way that we're operating, is to arrange for a property inspection. So we would come out, have a look at the property, use our checkers and work out what kind of works would need to be done mm -hmm. to bring the property up to the standard. If a landlord needs help doing that kind of work, we're here, we can help and offer that service. Some landlords choose to do that and some also prefer to just basically do the work themselves because they've got their own team of contractors and their experience in this field. So we, work, we will work with both types of landlords and quite happy to. The important thing is the property is up to the correct standard for the local authorities. That way we can then take them on on our guaranteed rent scheme. So that's it for this episode of Homes and Housing. I hope you feel like you've learned a lot. I certainly have. Don't forget to tune in next time. Follow us on our socials and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you later.